Welcome to this brief video about the CG200 clock frequency generator. The CG200 is a universal digital clock source. It can be a surprisingly useful piece of test equipment with many possible applications. The CG200 can generate a precise clock of any frequency, any logic type, and any logic voltage. The ease of setup and the very wide range of output options for the CG200 allow it to perform well for a variety of applications, anything from being as a general purpose signal generator with harmonics usable to over 700 megahertz to crystal and oscillator replacement and prototyping, determining circuit overclocking performance, or determining optimum clock or crystal tolerances for production designs. Here is the CG200 clock frequency generator set up connected to a Tektronix TDS694C real-time scope. This is a we're going to apply the power. Uh, initially, it goes through a self-test, internally testing its uh, own oscillators and memory and such. And if it passes, you'll end up with it coming up to this what we call the normal operating screen. And here you see that you get um, three. Uh, elements to the display, the frequency, the logic voltage, and logic type. Now, there's two modes that this uh, initial state can be for the CG200. It can be programmed either to come up as the last settings used, or it can come up in a pre-programmed set of frequency, voltage, and logic type. Each time you turn it on, you want it to always come up in the, a particular mode that would that is uh, irregardless of how it was last used. But uh, and here it is, it's coming up um, in the factory default mode. And we have a select button here. You'll see a cursor that the select button can move cursor to the three items you can adjust. So here we can use a tuning knob to change the frequencies. And of course you can see that on the scope and the frequency run up into several hundred megahertz. And we'll go back down to 10 megahertz where we had it set at before. You also have a, a tuning rate controls. So let's say you don't want to adjust in one megahertz increments. You want to adjust in, in kilohertz increments. You can do that or you can even drop down and adjust in one hertz increments. Um, then the select button, you can, you can take it over. You can change to logic voltage and here we are going up to 3.6 and down to 1.3 and so we'll just go back up here to 3.3 uh, 3 .3. and if we select the logic type we can scroll through the common mode logic, HSCL, LVDS. Um, you notice in LVDS that if we go back here to the logic voltage, that irregardless of how we set the logic voltage, the LVDS is always at the logic transitions as specified in the LVDS spec, which is good for not accidentally overloading the, uh, something in a circuit. Now, you also have one other control here on the front panel where you can uh, hit the output control, turns the output off. You can even display here, uh, hit the output button again, and the output returns. This is particularly useful if you're adjusting to some settings and you want to make sure that you don't apply the settings to the circuit until you're comfortable with them, either in terms of voltage level, the logic type, or whatever. So anyway, we'll go back through the other logic types and come back here to CMOS. And you have complementary outputs, uh, and you saw as we went through the logic modes, it's the complementary in all modes. Um, while, of course, many people will only need a single ended output, uh, in certain cases you either have to have complementary or it can just be handy to have the second output to use uh, for triggering a oscilloscope or something. There is a front panel menu control operation that there's about 20 something items and menus and several normal ones you would expect like brightness and the display form whether you like commons or dots depending on whether you have a more European or North American bent on uh, your display and you can go on down to the power up uh, settings that how you want this uh, unit to come up when it first gets powered and also a setting here to say if power is removed uh, and uh, is reapplied do you want the unit to turn back on if that was its last state or to just stay off until the user turns the power on so for certain experiments uh, you may want to the power of the unit to come back to full operation if the 
power is accidentally removed. There's a calibrate mode in here. You can set the calibrate frequency to whatever's convenient for you in your setup. Maybe you've got a rubidium oscillator you want to test against and set the frequency to that. And then you can go to the calibrate mode. Uh, this is uh, a detecting and setting and it goes in pretty fine increments so you can uh, dial in to make sure that 10 megahertz on the CG200 is indeed 10 megahertz and uh, there is an internal TCXO that is both analog and digitally disciplined so it should provide a pretty stable uh, and accurate frequency source uh, with a minimal uh, amount of calibration and it's good enough that in some applications you may be able to use a CG200 as a frequency reference not just a frequency generator. So that's the basics on the CG200.